Derek de Kerkhoff is uh, Marshall McLuhan's successor, and that's literally as well as physically. He's the director of the uh, McLuhan School at the University of Toronto, and he's no slouch himself at an epigrammatic epigram. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'll do it. Thanks. Thank you very much. <laughs> Well, I have to say, it's, uh, it's a wonderful thing to be, uh, to be here. I'm very grateful and very honored to be invited to be counted among the people who have ideas. I am, no, really, it's, it's, um, I, can't, no, I finally made it. I'm, I'm on this stage. Well, thank you very much, Moses. Uh, I uh, love ideas. I really do. I think it's one of the most delightful things that can happen to a mind, you know, an interesting idea you can play with. It really is fantastic. And so Idea City is a fantastic idea, but there are ideas as... Uh, somebody born in Belgium who has feet on the ground, I tend to always want my ideas to come, ideas or ideas that are interesting to come to fruition, to become something, something in the reality of daily life. And so I've always brought them together. So maybe we could go on to show the, that idea and I'll have a chance to talk about one. It's one once in 20 or, or 100 public conferences that I do when I stick to one idea. So you're lucky. OK, this is the one idea, the Global Village Square. And what a setup to have McLuhan uh, talk about that in the first word that we saw in this lovely video that was uh, done. You can guess at it in its very primitive form uh, in recognizing the agent center there. You might not recognize this spot, but this is the Galleria of um, Milano, the famous Galleria, which inspired, by the way, uh, Zeidler, Eberhard Zeidler, the architect who made the Eaton Square, that was the first connection in some ways, those two galleries. The whole idea being, do I have one of these examples here? The whole idea being to connect permanently, as in a public square, uh, two and more, as you will see, spots in the world for people to just meet. So I have to, oh, sorry. I want to give, a, as, a, as a real academic, I want to get to the previous one, if I may. Can you bring me back to the previous one? I don't know how to do this from here. As a true academic, I want to cite my sources. Where does the idea of the Global Village Square besides McLuhan come from? It comes from this transatlantic sensibility that Guglielmo Marconi uh, continued to inspire in somebody who immigrates from Europe and comes to Canada at the age of 17. I have always kept my transatlantic sensibility. And the Global Village Square is, is an extension of that. But this is an exactly, this is a great inspiration for me. Another great inspiration, of course, is this. Marshall McLuhan, the most beautiful thing he ever said. I think the medium is the message is lovely. It's full of, of, of profound things. And I think also the Global Village as an idea is sensational. But I can tell you one thing, this is the most beautiful thing he ever said. And it's very, very real. It's so real that, you know, we have to deal with that in our pockets now. We're wearing it right there. So it's really an extraordinary thing. Um, another profound influence on this particular piece, you will see why she uh, Kitty uh, Galloway and Sherry Rabinovitz in 1980 did the first video conferencing between two parts of the United States, one in New York and the other in Los Angeles, without telling anybody. What they did was to show a screen in a, in a, in a window <laughs> And people would walk by a window of a shop. They would buy in a, small, in a street in New York, and then they would just look in, and they would see this screen and people in, and they didn't know what it was, and most of them just went by. But those who stopped realized that the people who were in the screen were also looking at them. But they were in Los Angeles. And the artists said nothing. They just said, look, let's put it and see what happens. So first people accidentally got to each other, and the next day families who had been warned by the people who had tried it came, and the third day was Bedlam because all the media would be, had been alerted. So that was the, but that was the first experience of something which inspired me enormously. And then just to say that uh, here I am the host of somebody who I have been inspired quite a bit by many things, Speaker's Corners could also be considered as something of the same nature as the Global Village Square at the local scale but because fundamentally it's a public service. And it's the publicness of the Global Village Square, just as the publicness of uh, the Speaker's Corner that I feel uh, really are extremely important in an era where public space has changed its ground and its fact is disappearing when you look at how the networks are changing our sense of space. Okay, so the Global Field Square is to be announced. It's, it's a real project. It's a project which is very, very fragile and dicey, but it has support. 
It is to be announced very soon uh, at the ceremony of the twinning of Toronto and Milano on the uh, 3rd of July 2003. Announcing is one thing, doing is another. Here is where it will be. This is a beautiful picture of the, uh, of the beginning of the story of that Galleria Vittorio Emanuele. Here is uh, a simulation of what was the first project, first plan. And you will see a superposition of the uh, BCE place in Toronto because I wanted to show what it would like. I want it to, we want, we, the whole McLuhan program was with me on this, would like to see full screen, full size screen, uh, and that people could see each other in full, full size, and at the same time being able to hear and talk to each other as if they met in a park. So here's another simulation. Uh, you see that we are looking at something that would give you a sense of ease and comfort being involved with this. And another one here. Uh, also the idea of continuing uh, one space by the other as to create this unity of space in, in, in the electronic extension. And here's another example of that. The thing is, we have tremendous interest in the, on the part of Naples, and I'll get to that, uh, there is a, a good interest in the part of Milano, and there is interest in the part of the city of Toronto, but there is no, we haven't decided on the spot yet, and the Italians are pushing me to, to, to get moving with this, so we thought, well, the Italians, especially in Naples, are very keen because they've already actually selected a spot in which they want to do it, so thank goodness, we have a cyborg in the board of, uh, of directors of the McLuhan program. You know him as the, uh, and he, under his human name of uh, Steve Mann. He has a lovely gallery right across from the Art Gallery of Ontario. And so we may do an experimental stage of the Global Village Square uh, starting there. This is how we would do it. You, he has this, uh, this uh, billboard type of thing right in front of the gallery. And you can put a screen in it vertically, and people walking down the street would actually walk towards people who were in the screen, very much as the situation of Sherry and Kit's uh, in, uh, hole in space, but they would see, and they would come, and they would come close up, and then they would be able to recognize that something was happening, and the next thing they would know, they would go down those stairs, and they would be able to talk quite freely uh, with uh, the people because it, 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 the sound we protect from the street and also because we have a good sound system that allows you know, good directionality in the two things. And this would be the connection in the experimental stage of the Galleria Principe in Virtu Napoli. It's a smaller gallery but nevertheless it would do the job and people would be able to be protected from the weather and talk to each other as they would in a, in a real space. But this is the key, the Global Village Square is a global thing. That was just the first stage, you've got to start somewhere. As, uh, you know, uh, and so this was a very good way of doing it. The, the big problem has been to get a spot in Toronto specifically. But uh, Mark Federman, who works with me on this project, uh, made this map and made this kind of pre previous uh, preliminary selection of places where we want to have it. Indeed, we don't want to have point to point, that's especially between two countries, even though there's a strong relationship between Toronto and Italy. Uh, we want it to be a, really a global thing, so we've devised a, a sample of uh, places according to climate, according to population, uh, according to revenue, and of course, uh, north and south, east and west balancing at first. I in fact presented this project to the ambas ambassador of Canada to Italy uh, last week, and he said, I will find you a spot in Africa, which of course you will understand is extremely, uh, extremely critical. Clearly, you cannot have the same kind of setup as I described before uh, if you have more than one space. So this is a bad drawing of what we would be doing. The yellow spot is where people would stand. Above them is the area where they could walk in and have some privacy, not privacy, but they would be protected from the noise made by the other zones. Right in front of them, looking in towards that centerpiece, you will see that line in green. That's a very high quality screen, and we've got the screens in mind already, that would show whatever point was actually in connection at the time. So the idea would be that you would be able to turn around this uh, zone, and you would be walking across at least seven other places than your own in real time, accessing people in real time uh, the same, in the same fashion. This is a, a design of it, which I don't think we'll, we'll retain. However, just to give an idea, the, it's protected from the climate. This is all transparent. You can open it up in the summer, and you, it opens up. Now, where do you put it? And this in Toronto is a really big, big deal, because Toronto, if you think as a city, 
owns its own land. In fact, it doesn't. It controls very little land of, its, of the city and can make decisions about very little, practically none in the downtown area except this one, the famous Dundas Square, which has now been opened recently, and which does still have something. It might be nice if you could add something to it. So the Dundas Square. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't think it passed, but anyway. OK. Uh, <laughs> the point being, the point being, uh, that um, the point being that we could then have not only uh, the place at the center of this, but we would also have the vision, we would be able to give the people who were connecting with us a vision of a downtown that reminds you strangely of the very first image you saw in the video of McLuhan. Interestingly, with all sort of advertising and so on, this is cool, that's okay. And people would see, these are the various angles of Dundas Square, and there is something crying to be filling up there. Okay, <laughs> So that's the point. Um, but the real thing is, we basically have to deal with things like uh, you know, uh, time zones and so on. And in this particular case, there's a simulation of a time zone going. So we would have absolutely north and south axis as well as east and west. The meaning of this whole, the meaning of this whole project uh, is Technical, absolutely. It's a silly level of technical problems. It's actually all the technology is there already. It's not, it's not, a, it's not an issue. Even financially, it's not that expensive. Um, and it is technically a, a proper use, in my opinion, of the means that we have at our disposal today to connect real and virtual architecture, extend, make augmented reality by this sort of thing. I would say that the higher level of concern is a social. At the level of Italy and, and, and Canada, or Italy and Toronto, we've got 400,000 Italian immigrants in the greater Toronto area. They get married, show, make babies, show, and want to show babies to grandparents. This is a social, you know, uh, a very friendly kind of uh, simple thing. As I said, like, like you can you bring the baby there <laughs> and show it. But it is like, oh, can't, and you can make other things. You can, you know, you can it's a public park. You could also have concerts and things. This is all very nice. And, uh, but it is definitely something much, much wider when you expand it away from Toronto and Italy and you expand it to the rest of the world, at which point then the social dimension moves into a political level. Psychological and political. What's the political level? The political level is, first of all, that what makes a city is the sense that everybody shares the same physical space. So what would make a globe it would be the same type of thing. And what kind of connection would you make in a globe if you wanted to make the unity of the city in the, you know, the unity of the globe. It would be something like this. In other words, this is a project towards a change of mind, a change of heart on the part of just anybody. Nobody needs to know anything in order to use this kind of system. It's very, very simple. It's absolutely, you just walk there and meet people. So you would have a beginning of a change of your sensibility, your, a change of your idea. Uh, about, about the world. So that's, that's the point of this sort of thing. The psychological thing is this one. Um, you don't need to be exposed to a technology to be transformed by it. However, of course, the first who are exposed to it are transformed the first. And they are transformed usually without knowing that they are being transformed, which is why McLuhan was really relevant and continues to be relevant today. But the point it is, uh, is that if you hear, if somebody tells you, you know, you can go to uh, Eaton Center now, or you can go to Dundas Square, and if you want to talk to G Rio de Janeiro, you, you know, it doesn't cost you anything. And then you say, oh yeah, I'll do it sometime, how, how much fun. You talk about this, the more people hear about this, the more they realize that there is a communality of space between Rio de Janeiro and Toronto that they had not a clue existed before. A simultaneity of space that they didn't have a clue about uh, before. So the Global Village Square has this very strong psychological psychological dimension and the political dimension is that we are in really bad times as you I don't need to make a point about this we are in times which are the most difficult that I have known in my lifetime which is not that uh, short after all um, and so it's, it's really rough and we do need to come up with something quite different from the traditional strategies we have adopted so far to deal with the implosion of the world on itself we have not dealt with that very well so basically, I would like to see more ideas of this nature that actually do an attempt to connect, change our notion of globalization to that of globalism. Globalism being the equivalent to the planet of what civism, the ethics of the behavior of the civic person, is in the city. And uh, maybe I can conclude on, 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 on that. 
And again, pay attention to what, uh, what Moses has done with CTTV. Moses has created a formidable sense of the city thanks to this particular approach to television. Turn TV in an art form. I think we now need to expand this sort of thinking of how to create a community at a much, much larger level. And to uh, conclude on this, which is, I mean, an amazing thing this morning. I'm not inventing this. This morning, I got this. This came. This is just the first page of five pages, beautifully decorated, of a PDF sent to me by people in Siena who I have never heard about. But I, who heard about the Global Village Square? And so they're, they're, they're throwing their bid to get in. Uh, this is to, to say that there is a fabulous interest in it, and it's growing in Warsaw for the moment, in Paris, and, and, and in other places. So there is, there is life in this project, but as I said, it's still very, very tentative. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.